Hey guys, welcome to That Pedal Show. Dan here. Mick here. Hello. Uh, okay, so today the title of the video will give it away. We have a challenge. Mm. We've done a few challenge videos over the years. This challenge is, what have we called it? Comfort Zone Killer. Yeah, the Comfort Zone Killer rig, Dan versus Mick. Rules. Okay. You must choose one guitar, three pedals, and one amp that you will know will take the other out of their comfort zone for playing and tones. I love this. You can choose from whatever's available here at that pedal show. Okay. Once the rig's built, we'll hear the results here in the studio mm -hmm. and do the reveal. Then you must go away and compose a piece of music under two minutes and 30 seconds that proves you're out of your comfort zone. How about way under two minutes and 30 seconds? I, yeah. At least a minute and a half. Yeah. At least a minute and a half. Okay. okay. But you know, it wants to be a piece of music. A piece, okay. Um, in addition, you must produce a 10 minute vlog that explains your track, including a music video <laughs> <laughs> for your track. Okay. This is hilarious. Uh, points will be awarded for creativity and musicality, but most of all, making music that's not in your comfort zone. Okay. Okay. Ready? Yeah, let's do it. The difficult thing is I want to give Mick things that are going to challenge him, but I, want to, I don't want to give him things that are going to stifle him, you know? Um, so I think... I wanted to find some sort of synthy thing, but I think what I'm going to do is just like an envelope filter and just, you know, so the Funkify is, is really interesting. You get some really great sounds out of it, but you've got to mess around with it. He's, Mick's going to have to sit down with this and find some sounds that's going to work, especially with the guitar and the um, gain stage that I've chosen for him. So yeah, I think I'm going to, that one for now, and uh, two other, two other things. All right, this is really tough because Dan likes everything and he's pretty familiar with most things. Um, so, you know, I really want to give him something ambient in terms of uh, reverb or delay, but of course he loves reverb and delay. So I need to get creative with that. He likes pretty much all modulation. So that's quite tough, um, and I don't want to. I don't want to choose something for him that he just doesn't like. So I wouldn't choose a digital modelling amp or something like that. A because we don't have any. Um, it's not about what he doesn't like. It's about something that's just going to push him in a different direction. Let's start with overdrives. Um, the good news is there's quite a lot of overdrives that Dan doesn't like. He doesn't like clones. He doesn't like tube screamers. Um, so that should be fairly s simple. He also doesn't like fuzz faces because <laughs> um, he tends to prefer tone benders and muffs over fuzz faces and he prefers things with less of a mid hump. So I think that should be quite easy. There is one overdrive pedal that I've forgotten that I owned. Um, I might throw his way, which is my Maxon Analog Man modded SD9. Now lots of people have asked us to feature this on the show. SD9 was a sonic distortion, so that's a contender, or it might just be um, a common or garden tube screamer. So I think game-wise, it's going to be one of those. Maybe a fuzz, maybe a fuzz. But for now, uh, I'm stuck, so we'll pick this up in a minute. Okay, so this is the gain stage. Now, Mick is not a fan of Big Muff, but we, we played this recently. This is the um, Dope Priest, and I think what Mick doesn't like normally about Big Muffs is they're quite scoopy, but this I think has got enough means that he's going to be able to work with it. Um, but it's definitely a Big Muff sound, so I want to hear what he can do with that. But again, I'm not kneecapping him by giving him like a completely scoopy no means Big Muff. So he'll be able to work with that. But the other pedal that I want to see what he can get out of is this. So this is the blooper from Testus Audio. It's a modulating looper pedal. Uh, all of the sounds I've heard people get from this 
I don't understand. It's so out there. And I think that once Mick has spent a bit of time with this, I would be very surprised if he doesn't come up with something really, really cool. Uh, yeah, so that's the three. Right, decisions made. Um, so, Maxon SD9 or TS808. I'm going to go with the SD9 because it's an unknown quantity for both of us, really. I, I've played it a couple of times, but I don't really know what it does, and I'm not sure Dan does. We've certainly never had it on the show, whereas we've had this on the show all the time. So it is a genuinely unknown quantity. So it, the Maxon goes on. Um, now, this might not seem like it's outside of Dan's comfort zone because he really loves reverb. But the way Dan tends to use reverb is in a pretty tasteful way. So he might use it, he might use a bit of one of those kind of modern um, sparkly type reverbs in something like the Timeline, uh, sorry, in the Big Sky. And he always likes a bit of, you know, non-spring reverb from a, from a reverb pedal. He's a big fan of that. However, this is bonkers. The Rooms by Death by Audio, which is just out, I think, or it was announced at NAMM and it's just out. Um, it's got six completely crazy, uh, or potentially completely crazy modes of reverb um, with probably some sort of expression pedal option as well, I hope, uh, which I will, yeah. I don't know, does it? I would have thought so. Anyway, it's got an alt switch, which does crazy things. Um, Watch the demo online, it's amazing. And I think he's gonna have a great deal of fun with that. So reverb, overdrive, and... Um, jam pedals wacko wah, pretty much the best wah wah we've heard. Uh, we never use wah wahs. Dan's really not a fan. So um, what I'm secretly hoping is, instead of wacka wacka in a way, he might use it creatively in a filter sense. But we'll see. We'll see. So there we go. Um, SD9, Wacko Wa, Rooms. The hilarity is that I want to put it all on one of these um, Schmidt Array boards, and of course the Wa Wa won't fit on <laughs> any of the boards. So we'll use the little one. We'll make it majestic like this. <laughs> Actually, if it will take an expression pedal, then at least I can put the expression pedal on here as well. Okay, here it is. First in the signal chain is the Funkify, and that's going into the Dope Priest. So an envelope filter, and this is a really cool one because it's got you know octaves and frequencies and things, but I find they work best first thing. You also use them, um, they're triggered by the dynamics of the guitar. If you put them after gain stage, they're triggered by the dynamics of the gain stage and they sound very different. But having them triggered by the guitar and then gain stages after that can sound awesome. So that's what we've done. So we've got the Funkify first into the Dope Priest and then that goes into the blooper. So the Dope Priest is obviously the gain stage and I said before that it's got enough mids I think that it's going to be able to work with it. The blooper, you can use this as a delay um, but you know it's one of those things that he's going to have to sit down and really spend some time with. Um, but I'm pretty confident that once he does that, he's you're going to really enjoy it and get some great sounds. Um, the question, I've got two guitars I'm sort of umming and ahhing between. Uh, and not really sure of the amp yet. But yeah, but this is, at least this is done. Right, so just putting Dan's board together, it's going to go on Schmidt Array SA250, as I said, because um, there's only two pedals going on there. Well, actually three, because... I'm going to uh, break the rules and give him an expression pedal as well to go with his uh, reverb. So um, let's just put that on there. Nice. Just to mix it up a bit, because it you know it might not seem that out of comfort zone to give down a reverb pedal, I'm going to put the reverb before the overdrive. So that in terms of signal chain, that was Simon's idea. Um, in terms of signal chain, it just gives him a bit more to think about. Will it force him to be a bit more creative? Apologise for my glasses. I had to pull the rubber bottom off the bottom of the um, 
max on just because pedalboard tape doesn't stick to it and the trick of turning the thingy over um, doesn't always work on these either because the circuit board's too close to the bit of metal. So I just pulled the stuff off, which is what I do on all my tube screws. So, um, yeah. Um, guitar. Don't want to give him a strap because he played a strap for years and he's got his Ed O'Brien strap. Obviously a telly is out of the question. I could throw him a Collings or something like that, but I think I'm going to go with the 335 because it's physically a large guitar. It's semi-acoustic, which he never plays, and it's humbuckers. All the things he's not really super comfortable with, so he can take the 335. I think that'll work well for him. Amps I haven't quite decided yet. Okay. It's down to two guitars. It's either gonna be this, um, because it's something that neither of us, you know, we just, we, we're, we're not this genre of player. So I think it could be very interesting, but I'm leaning slightly more towards this. So this is my EOB Strat with the sustainer. Um, I think Mick has said the only thing stratty about this guitar is the shape. I'm not quite sure, but I'm wondering if he sat down with it and with the sustainer and the blooper, I think he could come up with some really, really cool things. Um, but I don't know if this is a bridge too far. I don't know if this is some sort of breaking some sort of sacrosanct agreement, the non-verbal non agreement that we have. I don't know, I don't know. Uh, as far as amps are concerned, the only prerequisite that I have for the amps is that it has reverb, because there's no reverb on the amp. Um, we've just got this, we've been using this today, the Tone King, and it's got trem and reverb in it, and I think it's basically like a deluxe reverb type thing. And I think with that board into this amplifier, I think it'll, this will be a platform that he'll be able to use with those sounds. So for example, with the blooper, the amp's got to have a bit of headroom because it's got to be able to reproduce what's going on in that. Like, there's no point in me giving him a Marshall crank type sound because the, um, the, the blooper, the fidelity that you need to recreate the sounds coming from the blooper it just won't be there. And I think if, if he gets this and some, you know, reverb and trim, I think that's going to be a, a good... Yeah, sorry. I, th I think this might make up for all the other stuff I'm giving him <laughs> with any luck. So we'll see. Right, board's done. Ready to go. I've tested it all. Uh, we said the 335 and the amp I'm going to choose is the Mesa California Tweed because Dan tends to be of a EL84 fairly high headroom school and I think the 6v6 is in the Cali Tweed and its kind of overall presentation is going to be quite a different thing for him. Sure, it's not, um, I don't know, a Katana 100 or something else that would that he just wouldn't like. I wanted, I wanted to give him something that's out of his comfort zone but hopefully he's still going to really like. So uh, let's see how he gets on with that. Da da. <laughs> da, -da. <laughs> bit tired, mate. <laughs> bit warm. Okay, so uh, we're going to reveal. We're going to reveal the boards first, then the amp, then the guitar. Yes. One at a time, though. You go first. All right. I, I see we've both been discerning in our choice of pedal board. Indeed. Yeah. Schmidt Array SA250. Ready? Yep. Okay, I have reasons. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, um, the, the Funkify, because there's an octave effect in there as well, yep. right? And an envelope filter. And I just thought, uh, um, just to, because we haven't done a lot of stuff with that, and I know like how good you are rhythmically. I thought you'd do something really, really interesting with that, right? 
the deep the dope priest because you don't go towards big muffs. However, there's a mid range in that that I think you're going to find something. You know, I, I wasn't going to give you a scoopy big muff. Yeah. Right, but I think there's a mid range in that that you're going to get you're going to get used to, uh, and and find something really cool with. Now the blooper. I'm though, so pleased you've put that on there. Good. Seriously, because I have got no idea what it does. Okay. The thing is, it, you can do a bunch of stuff, and you can use it as a delay. Right. But the sounds that you can get out of that is so interesting. But you have to sit with it. Okay. You know what I mean? It's it's going to be one of those things where you're going to have to spend some time with it. Yeah. And I think between the three of those and the guitar that I give you, there's going to be some sounds in that that I think you're going to really enjoy, but but ab- find some inspiration and, you know, create some music with. That's really cool. I think I'm, I'm semi-surprised to see this because I think I'm going to be at home with that. Right. Uh, this and this. Okay, go on then. Okay. <laughs> and then, hang on, there's one thing to add that I've got in this box. It's, um, it was quite tough to get in there. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Wow. Okay. Um, so just to explain, you can put that wherever you want. Yep. Before or after. Okay. There's power there. Great. Thank you. And all I need to do is find you a patch cable. Yep. Um, I wanted to choose an overdrive that is not in your wheelhouse. You did it. And, but the great thing, that's really easy with you because I could have chosen a tube screamer, Mm -hmm. a clon. Yeah. Or a fuzz face. Yes. So the overdrive bit was easy, but I thought that's unknown to both of us. And so many people have asked for it. Okay. So it's the Analog Man modded SD9. I, I thought it was a I thought it was a tube screamer. Okay. No. No, the SD9. Okay, wow. Have you ever had an SD9? No. Great. Win. No, completely new to me. All right, that right. is brilliant. Now, putting a putting a reverb on a pedal board for you would not seem to be out of your wheelhouse. Sure. That is crazy. Okay. And I think it's got modes in it that, because the way you, I've explained this in the VC before, but the way you use reverb is always pretty tasteful. Sure. This is not that. Okay. Yep. And so I've given you an expression pedal. That's... For Mate, it. this is going to be awesome. Well, I'm really excited. I don't know if the expression pedal is configured correctly, so Sorry, we'll work that out. And then you can, and but just because a reverb might seem to be too much in your world, mm. the reverb's first. Of course it is. <laughs> All right, so it goes, <laughs> and you can put the <laughs> you can put the wah wah wherever you want. You can put it before okay. or after. I might so. put it after everything. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. presumably you've gone fairly traditional with my signal order, have you? I I have only because I wanted the blooper to be last because I want I want you to be able to create sounds and affect them and loop and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. But I didn't because the the dope priest I thought was so far removed from anything that you'd normally yeah. use. I didn't want to start messing with the order of things, you know. So uh, we've got the. Uh, envelope filter first, dope beat second, blooper last. Will you permit me to add an expression pedal to the front? Of course, yes, absolutely. Great. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. All right. Amps. Amps. Uh, I'll go first. You go first. Oh, awesome. Now, I've, okay. done, I've done that because... Um, it's the Mesa California Tweed, just in case you can't see. Yep. The reason I've done that is uh, it's pretty traditional. Right. So I haven't chosen like a preamp and a hot and a speaker cab, which sure. I was thinking about going way out of it. Yeah, but yeah, I yeah. want you to be inspired. Yeah. I don't I, want yeah, you to struggle. I've, I've done a similar thing. And that's where, you know, like this isn't give gear to your mate that they're really going to struggle with. Yeah, it's yeah, give them yeah, something yeah. different that's going to inspire them. Yeah, just to push them, push the boundaries. Yeah, yeah and yeah. that's got a response, an EQ curve and a, and a breakup character that's nothing like what you normally play. Okay, okay. So that's why I've chosen that. Okay, right, you need to shut your eyes for a second. Oh, 
I hear reverb. I hear reverb. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> now, so the reason that I've chosen this, we've been using this amp today. Yeah. It sounds magic, but with this, I needed something that had headroom. Yeah. There's no there's no reverb on the board, so I needed something that had reverb so that the you could add some depth to stuff. Yeah. But also, this being the deluxe reverb thing, and we haven't really used deluxe reverb sounds here. No, to give me giving me a fender amp is it would seem like a very obvious thing to do because I love Fender amps. But yep. I've never had a deluxe reverb. Yeah. I've never had anything that low power. And the stuff that we've, the, the sounds we've been getting out of today have been great, but it's like unusual for us, these sounds. They're not something that yeah, yeah. I, I've thought, certainly nothing that we had before. Mm. And I thought, okay, it's got the headroom. You've got some reverb and trim mm. that you can go nuts with. Two more effects. Awesome. As have you, by the way. You, Brilliant. But yeah, it's it's just, it's a sound that I certainly haven't heard you use before, no, and I think no that'll tremble, work brilliantly. No Sorry, I thought I had tremolo, but it it's, doesn't. Wicked. I think this is going to be pretty cool. Okay, um, well, you, you might think that until you see the guitar you got to use. <laughs> okay, I'll go first then. All right. Ready? Close yep. your eyes. 61 Strat, 61 Strat, 61 Strat, 61 Strat. Not a 61 strat. You know what it is. Oh my goodness! Oh, unreal! So, you don't... I feel bad now. You don't really love humbuckers. It's, yeah, not really my thing, but... But you use them. Yep. You never play a semi-hollow. Never. And it's a massive body. Yeah. So it's, it's almost the opposite of a telly. Yeah, right. There isn't a waggle stick on it, but... I think it's I th I think it's far enough outside of your, you know, it's not an Ibanez gem. And if you give me the gem, I don't know what I'm going to say. And I bet you are going to give me the gem, you sod. Um, it was one of the two guitars that okay. was in the short list, but it didn't make it. Phew. All right. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. Shut your eyes. <laughs> oh, I feel bad now. Don't feel bad. I'm I'm literally happy with anything, apart from the gem. Please don't be the gem. There you go. It's a strat. Eddie O'Brien strat. Yeah. <laughs> so it's. There are things in, I mean, obviously it's a Strat, but there are things in there, you gotta plug it in for that to happen. Oh, uh, okay. But with the sustainer and stuff, because I remember you playing it and you're going, yeah, the only thing straddy about this is the shape from afar. And I just thought, okay, I wanna hear, A, what you do with the dope priest and that sort of mini humbucker in the bridge, but with the, the blooper and the reverb and the amplifier, I wanna hear what you can do with the sustainer. Yep. It's cool. The neck is lovely. The neck is awesome. Yep. Oh, it's great. This will be fun because it's humbucker as well, which yep. is completely outside of my world for certainly a, in strat world. For a strat. So this is going to be great. Yeah. Right. Shall we um, plug in? Plug in. Okay. Right. Go on then. Okay. I believe. No, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll assist. Okay. So you keep getting up and down. Oh, I think I'm there. I'll give you a two minute tour of this amp. All right. Okay. Um, Low input, yeah. kind of maximum headroom. Oh, yeah. Yep, yeah, are we all right on the levels there, Simon? We're fine. Yeah. Okay, keep going. Minimum headroom, high input, 
cranked. <laughs> Flat out. That's really lovely. Like that? That's really lovely. And then everything in between, what, uh, just in case the camera couldn't quite get to that, it started on the 40 watt in the low input, which is the highest gain you'll get out, highest okay. headroom Headroom. you'll get out of it. Yep. And then we switched all the way down to two watts um, in the high input and literally turned the whole thing up to 10. Okay. And that's how, that's how freaked out it was. Okay. You'll notice when we get to it, I've included the card for the rooms. Thank you very much. You notice I haven't. Yeah, thanks. Okay. So. Hello, Internet. How Landau uses it. Okay. If 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 the rumor is true, gain and tone on zero, level on ten. I don't know if that's true, but I've heard it. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> Sounds just like him. It's not true. I can work with that. Okay, all right. Here we go. There's some homework to do there. there I think the, um, the the expression pedal's not configured correctly uh, yeah, for it. Yeah, I'll sort so that out. We need to sort that out. Okay. And, uh, we haven't heard you while wiring, Dan. No. Good job, too. <laughs> <laughs> 
Is this this is on the input? I'm assuming. Yeah. So much fun. I think you can work with that, can't you? Yeah, totally, totally. Yeah. It totally sounds it and a feel and stuff that I've, like, never used before. Yeah, I mean, you can see why that Maxwell never ended up on my pedal board. Yeah. It sounds weird. <laughs> and so many people really love it. Yeah, okay. So there's obviously some magic to discover that we have not managed to okay. discover. And my, I've, I, I've, I have my task right. set before me. Okay. It's a strat, Jim. But not as we know it. So the back switch on when you on is up, yeah, and that's when you start get the sustain. Yeah, the foot the the forward switch is either uh, octave up, um, normal or both.
exactly. No idea. I think you've done it. <laughs> Nailed it. Comfort zone expanded. This is going to be blooming fascinating. So, yeah. number one, getting that to do anything in the least bit predictable. But I think that's part of the challenge is you got to allow yourself to do something that's not predictable. As in, you, I think you, you, you got to spend time with it to create a sound, but at the end of the day, it is random. Is it? There are elements of it that are completely random. I need to watch the videos. You know, so, and it's just experimenting until you find a sound that you go, okay, this is it, and record it. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Um, so I guess we say let's fast forward to Daniel's vlog and see what he came up with in the future. Oh, heavens. <laughs> This is awful. I've got to turn the amp up. I've got to have some hair on the amp. And then... Yeah, I think that's got a pretty aggressive bright count on amp as well. But it's, it's gonna be cool. I'm right in the middle of filming. Can I call you back? Okay, first things first, um, mixed guitar. I have uh, secretly uh, coveted this guitar for a while and it is astonishing. <laughs> Just beautiful. Um, so I decided to use it in a, in, you know, if I'm gonna go out of comfort zone, I'm gonna go all the way out of my comfort zone. So um, yeah, I'm just gonna kind of use this guitar to sort of do heavy stuff. Right, we've got the Wacko Wire from Jam Pedals. It's really great. You've got a little um, rotary switch on the side, which is a, like a capacitor array that lets you uh, choose the upper um, frequency limit of the wire. Um, but it's, as, you know, as far as wires go. So when the first part of the riff comes in, it's the SD9, uh, the distortion is all the way off and the tone is just on. I'm struggling with the pedal uh, into this amp, it sounds a bit fizzy for this sort of thing. Um, when, when it gets heavy, it actually sounds amazing. Uh, but yeah, so that first riffy thing is the wacko thing, like a cocked wire position. Uh, and that's going through the, the SD9. Now the SD9 was really interesting. What I found was with this amplifier, to get the SD9 to work, I had to really increase the gain in the amplifier and also go into the low gain channel. So that there wasn't so much headroom that was getting all the fizz. It basically, it was warming up the fizz from the SD9. So, so, so this is without the SD9 on, you can hear the amp is actually quite crunchy. When the main riff comes in, it's the SD9 with basically the, the gain to about, I'd say, two o'clock, uh, wire off, and then um, humbuckers. <laughs> So 
So, you know, fiddling around with those EQs and getting to work with the amp, that's, you know, relatively simple. Um, what was really interesting is this reverb pedal because it is the first thing in the chain. So this is going into the distortion. Um, so, I mean, I could use it by itself without the distortion and it's man alive. So the room sound is this big, beautiful... Um, And that's uh, switching between the, um, the, the modes. You've got this alt button, which gives you another set of controls. So you can sort of switch between um, two different parameter levels for the same uh, reverb. At the beginning of the song, and basically all the way through it, I'm using the reverb on the peak setting. I've turned the dry signal all the way off. So you're only hearing affected signal. And I'm using an expression pedal to sweep the filter. So you get this sort of thing. It's crazy good. It's true stereo as well, so I'm really keen to get this into uh, my big rig and see how it goes. The solo is basically loads of distortion and using the wah pedal, and I'm using the room reverb in this, and it's only just on. And what happens is you don't really hear the reverb until there's a gap. <laughs> And that's because the reverb is going into the overdrive pedal um, and all those trails are distorted and it sounds really great. I really like the sound of it in this track. Um, but yeah, it's just a mess and a cacophony of noise and some fun harmonies and stuff. Now the amplifier, I haven't used the reverb on the amp at all. That's been all the way off. Um, and I've just had the input gain turned up just to round off the, uh, the, those fizzy edges of the SD9. Now I must say I was ready to write the SD9 off um, but in the heavy section, it actually worked awesome. I mean, it does sound, if you imagine, that's a 335 into a tweed, like the California tweed. That's the sound of the SD9. You know, it sounds ace. But it's the Rooms reverb from Death Boy Audio. Um, boy, oh boy. It's, you know, anything that makes this track interesting is basically coming out of this box. Okay, so this is what I've come up with.
Sounds great. First of all, welcome to the new vlog space. Dan and I have had a bit of a rejig around at TPS Towers and created this extra uh, space that we can work in, which is really cool and pretty exciting. So the track, um, I was driving to work one morning and a drum beat kind of came into my head. So I got out of the car and this came out. So I programmed that up using the shape um, plugin expansion thing in Luna. Uh, and used a couple of the Ocean Way Studios drum sets for that um, and then just built it up from there. I took some video clips on the iPhone as I went along just documenting how I used the three main pedals. I did add an expression pedal to the um, Funkify to get the wah wah sound and you'll also see a JHS summing amp on the board Orcs send and returns so I could affect things post. What I'm trying to do is get audio um, out of my Luna project through the Apollo Twin into the pedal board, back into the Apollo Twin and back into my Luna project. So I managed to spend an hour with Blooper. Um, read the manual, I'm going through it, but the creativity is absolutely stone cold dead at this point. So um, hopefully things will improve. That's now going through all this. So if I hit this reverb on, right? But interestingly, it's going through blooper. Blimey, um, I don't know, three and a half hours to get to just basic noise. Things have moved on. I've got my first guitar part. For some reason, I'm going pretty heavy with this. I think it's the Dope Priest is bringing it out. The Tone King is teeny tiny volume. It's attenuated down like one or two steps and the volume is down there. It's really not loud in the room at all. And the Dope Priest is with the sustain up full, volume almost all the way down and the tone up a bit. Um, and the main guitar part's gonna go like this. <laughs> So I'll do that and I'll double that. I thought my days of being on my hands and knees were over since I left a corporation. I'm gonna try and demonstrate one example of how I've used blooper and it's on the um, intro, the very intro to the song. A power chord uh, on the Ed O'Brien strap there. <laughs> Something that happened with the sustainer that's made it do that. Start, stop. On B, I select that, selected that to be a filter, and filter really up high, right? On mod A, plays it in reverse and pitches it up an octave, so. That's what I did. In the bit where the... I've got the Tone King set up like this. Uh, with a bit of tremolo and a bit of reverb. So I went with the beat and I played the chord on the one, right? One, two, three, Okay, last bit for today, bass, right? Trusty Fender P bass, the track's ending up heavier than I imagined, so Ampeg SVT uh, DI there, which enables you to direct out into the pedal board and also balanced out into the um, recording machines. So what that means is I've got two sources, so I'm sending a straight DI to the, um, to the desk, which sort of sounds like this. <laughs> it doesn't sound like that. What I've done is I've added the Dope Priest and the Funkify, right? So if I just add the Funkify, you get... Right, and then I'm gonna add the Dope Priest as well. <laughs> Real stank face. So I can mix them 
and hopefully that will sit in that track quite nicely. We'll see. So the gentle warbling noise in the background is the sound of the dope priest and the funkify. Basically I'm using an expression pedal with the funkify to get that kind of histrionic, wah-wah, pentatonic lead sound. Not entirely out of one's comfort zone, but hey. <laughs> There's like an arpeggiated bit, which is literally the Tone King with the tremolo on the clean channel, bridge pickup on this guitar, and I play this. But I switched the sustainer on part way through, so... Like that, and then I double that part, like a call and response. I wanted like this bit in one speaker, and then an immediate response in the other speaker, almost like a call and response, but harmonized. So the second part, I went to the middle pickup and played. And did the same thing, like switch the, switch the uh, sustainer on part way through. The second time you hear it, the harmonized part, I turn the funkify on to get like an organ sound, which is the filter and the octave. Um, I think there's a part uh, which uses the filter. Uh, just thinking about, um, John May uses it in a couple of songs and that, I mean, it's a sound you've heard down the years. So I think that's all the guitar parts. Okay, last little bit. I'm sat here trying to mix. Um, massive respect to anyone that can mix music. It's such an art. Um, and I've decided that uh, music without singing is a bit like drinking on your own. Um, it can be brilliant, but it's not entirely healthy. So I've put down, look at this, vocal microphone, three harmonies to go towards the end of the track. I've literally sat here with the headphones on and gone, ah, and harmonize that twice so you get this. which sounds kind of all right when you soak it in reverb. I did manage to get some orc send and returns back through blooper and I blooped it and ended up with this. So look out for that towards the end of the track. A bit of fun just layered in there. So let's see if I can actually mix this. It's tough with those really wild guitars. Anyway, onwards. Here's the track and uh, let's see what Dan thinks.
So I've gone for a bit of fun, right? You've gone for a, like a full on white snake video. <laughs> I feel like I'm seven years old at the beach and I've done something that I thought was really clever. It in fact turned out to be really stupid. And my dad has pulled down my pants and spanked my butt for the whole world to see. Uh, uh, honestly, it was it was epic. How did you do that? <laughs> it's like you had cranes and a crew, and there's like you know, it was it was amazing. You had, a, you had to have a drone for that, right? Yeah, it got a bit carried away. So <laughs> <laughs> far out, man. So I had this idea. I said to Catherine, right, um, let's just we'll wander up the hill and just take the steady cam and just follow me, and I'll just walk and run and we'll just take some shots and I'll list it together. So we literally, that's what we did. We walked up to the hill and I ran right. and walked and and thought I'd sort of construct this narrative about a journey. Okay. Right. Anyway, then she said, you know, what we really need is a drone. And I was like, yeah, I don't know anyone with a drone. No worries. Doesn't matter. I said, yeah, because what I want is that thing where Slash... In November rain is playing the solo at the church, right? So it's kind of sort of serious slash cheesy slash slash. And anyway, Catherine went up to the farm to get an ice cream. And as she's going up to the farm to get an ice cream, the lady in the ice cream shop says, oh, my son's just got a drone. Oh, you're joking. And she's like, really? Does he, does he? So... Literally, he barely used it. He'd done some stuff. And we went over to one of the fields. And that's like about six minutes of drone footage. Far out, man. So, number one, we're getting a drone. Number one, we're getting a drone. <laughs> anyway, I yeah. Couldn't, and then, I couldn't believe it. It's and as, as it started to take shape, um, I just got a bit silly. <laughs> got a bit carried away. Far out. I... When I hear you play stuff like that, stuff that you just write off the cuff, it's so creative. The changes in it are fantastic. That's got to be nicked from somewhere, isn't it? That's got to be a Black Sabbath riff. Yeah, and everyone else. But it just it's the way it worked in the context of the tune, I thought I thought you did brilliantly. And it just makes me... It's like... I really think you... When you're told that well, we've got to do this, you always come up with absolute gold. I would love to hear you do something like an EP or something. Well, it's, isn't it interesting? Because I can find all the creativity in the world to do silly stuff like this. Right. And it was, it, But it was silly slash epic. Yeah, but it starts off silly, doesn't it? And then you go, oh, actually, there's something here. But back to the point of the show. Back to the point of the show. Yeah. That whole being out of the comfort zone thing. So... You recorded all your guitars in that room, right? Yep. How did you find that in terms of... Because um, the sounds were epic. I mean, the sounds weren't small. The clean sound when you played the jazz bit um, and the overdrive sounds, they weren't small because we sit here week in, week out mm. saying guitars need to be loud, blah, 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 blah. And I think we both got some pretty decent, quiet guitar sounds. Sure. I think... But it's, it's a context thing, right? We're sat here being inspired with loud amps. That's a different thing. We get that feedback thing happening in a recording situation. You've got to take into account, you know, uh, so, so where I did the guitars over there, because you recorded over there as well, right? Yeah. Okay. And I had that amp was on the two watt mode. Yeah. You know, and I just got it going to a point where it was, because um, I had to turn up the, the front end gain. Yeah. To round off those edges. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite aggressive, isn't it? Yeah. But, it, you know, like in that context, it worked brilliantly. But I was, I was more, um, I was more concerned with, uh, you know, trying to get my head around what the pedals were doing. Yeah. You know, uh, as opposed to, okay, now I'm just trying to get great tone. It was just more about, you know, being creative with, with that yeah. minimal setup. Um, and Yeah. I mean, I've always loved quiet amps recorded. I've always yeah. thought they sound great. It's just I, I find it a little bit easier to manage. Yeah. One thing I really struggle with, because the Dope Priest has that really massive scoop mid on it. Sure. And very nasal, especially when you step on the Funkify for the Wawa. Right. Getting that to sit mix-wise, well, as you hear, is 
really hard because they all sort of scramble into one another and it's this very, so you end up like filtering all of the bottom end off, even up to about like 120, 160 wow. hertz maybe and let the bass take care of all of that. Sure. It would be super interesting to get someone to mix it, to get Fraser to mix it and have a listen because mm. it is, it's a dark art. No, it's not a dark art. It is an art. It is an art. Yeah. Getting all that stuff to sit. Yeah. What do you, uh, how do you get on the guitar? I adore this guitar. Right. Any challenges? Uh, any challenges? No, it's, it's, you know, big thick neck on this thing. Um, same. But the, yeah, yeah, right. It's massive. Um, but it's straight back to jazz school, you know, hearing that it's like, oh man, yeah. Okay. That's that sound, you know, but I want, I, I sort of, there's a little bit of that in there at right yeah. at the end. It's but a I, fantastic sound. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 so it's got all that. But then that on, you know, detuned both in drop D as well. Yeah, interesting. We both defaulted to drop D. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's a rock <clears throat> machine. Yeah, it, I, there was a couple of sounds you got there that was really honky midi, lovely, really classic overdrive sounds. I yeah, thought. right. Well, heavy, well, that's mixing heavy. the the Coctua thing just with the open thing. Let's try and get that balanced. But yeah, I I this is an absolutely incredible guitar. It's beautiful. The um, I think we're going to have to look at the rooms a bit more. Are you joking? That thing you were doing with the filter on the expression pedal was yeah. like, oh my God, that's really cool. Yeah, I want to get it set up in stereo and and, and get all that happening, um, get it in the big rig. But that pedal is, uh, it's a game changer. Mm. You know, as far as, as far as what, you know, being creative with Reva, I, I, you know, it's not, it doesn't have presets or anything like that. It's very much hands-on. Um, and you can see the amount of, of sound, the amount of great sounds in it, not just, you know, I've got pedals that have got a million sounds in them, you know, a million shades of blah, but that thing has got so many epic sounds in it. I'd love them to do a version of that that gives you a few presets so you can switch between them. But just being able to, to switch that alt switch, it, ch it takes over from the main set of controls and, you, and then you alternate back and forth between, between those. Between the two things. Yeah. Oh, very cool. And that gives you, when you and when you change the, the time and stuff, that gives you the ramp up and the ramp down when you go, uh, you know, that thing was crazy. Mm. Um, yeah. Um, wonderful. One of, the, one of the things I struggled with a little, not struggled, but one of the things that dawned on me with the blooper mm. was that the stuff you create with it is kind of a one-off. Yeah, sure. You, you can save loops in the blooper, but blimey. And I should say that I ended up only using like, 20% of the bloopers right. capabilities, if that. Um, but because of the nature of it, you know, used in that environment where you're trying to create something and you're just going with what comes mm -hmm. out because mm -hmm. you don't have hours, right? Mm -hmm. You don't have hours to do this stuff. So you just need to get something cool and go with it. Yep. That does make recreating it something of a problem. Sure. So I guess f for all the Sonic Warriors out there who might use something like blooper or indeed rooms, there's an element of unpredictability in what happens, which is really cool in a live environment, mm. but it does make it quite difficult rec recording. Yeah. You know, I ended up having to get in there and chop stuff up. Okay. In in the track. Right. It's the main bloops, like where I play that minor 11 chord or whatever it is, mm -hmm. um, um, that's all one take, but the a lot of the rest of it's cut up and, you know, edited. Right. Within the door. Sure. Well... I have to hand you the crown for this one. You knocked it out of the park. It was epic. I got carried away. No, it was it was really great. Just though. the hay well bales, standing on the hay bales playing a guitar solo. You'll notice that I deliberately didn't try and play the guitar solo because the cheesy point is that you're not playing the right thing when the camera goes across. I promise you it was absolutely deliberate. Um, and yeah, actually, I just wanted to talk a little bit about this. Um, what I found interesting, because so much of this is alien to me, sure. the, these pickups, yep. Stainer, yep. hulking great fat neck. Yep. I had no problem whatsoever with this guitar. Really? At all. That's wonderful. Literally no barrier to entry playing this guitar. Oh. Um, the neck is great. One thing I did discover, I think as soon as you turn the sustainer on, you're on the bridge pickup, exactly. aren't you? Yeah. Exactly. So there was one bit where I go to the middle pickup and do something switch the sustainer on mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden I'm back on the bridge pickup. Yep. So you do hear a few clunks and clicks in the in the tune, but 
Always like that kind of thing. Yeah. No, that's great, man. Well done. What have we missed? Oh, well done you. You sounded amazing. No. I, I got to wear a wig. That was the that was the extent of my... <laughs> you made me laugh. Far out. I, I, thought, I thought, oh, this would be great. I, you know, I'm going to push the boat out with this. I'm going to wear a wig. And then yours is going, <laughs> watching it, just going, what the... <laughs> <laughs> I do get carried away. I do get carried away. I've also just started using DaVinci Resolve as a video editor and it's the colour correction. The colour is incredible. It's so much better than Premiere Lumetri in terms of how much scope you've got over okay. everything. Or at least it's much easier to use in my brain. Sure. So I don't think it would pass any broadcast standards, would it, Simon? But <laughs> a little bit overexposed in places, I think. But um, it's beautiful. just such a treat to be able to go. And it's the same with plugins in recording. Mm. It's a treat to just be able to go overboard on everything. And I think that, I think that is really the essence of this video. Sure. You know, you know, Dan, that I get a bit annoyed when people accuse me of being in my comfort zone the whole time. Okay. Yeah. Because what you might, what might not be immediately obvious about that pedal show is Dan and I sit here and there's a bunch of people involved in producing this and we need to get a bunch of videos shot in a day. So that kind of being on the edge of your creativity for a day's video shoot, yeah, means we'd never get anything shot. Sure. So you do have to play it safe a little bit, yeah. And let it be, let it be said that the thing I love more than anything else in the world is relatively simple blues guitar. But given the opportunity to stretch one's legs, and a few hours in which to do so, mm. that is actually my comfort zone. Right. Okay. Sitting here with this is great fun, and we love it, and we we chum on. But it's hard work, isn't it? It is, yeah. Because you're like, okay, now I've got to play something. Oh, no. <laughs> Whereas when you're recording, you can do 50 takes. Sure. No worries. Yeah. So I, th yeah. I, I. How it, long did it take you? Um, the track took about two and a half hours, maybe. Plus at least that in mixing. Wow. Um, took about an hour to program the drums. Yeah, actually, no more than that, because I spent all that time trying to work out blooper. If you add sure. all that in, probably a day. Okay. If you add in working out the pedals, probably a day. The actual rolling camera footage time was less than half an hour. Stop it. Maybe 35 minutes. Because I, I, okay. I said to Catherine, there's no thinking about this. It just is what it is. Right. And we'll add shake, and we'll cut it at the point where the camera goes wobbly. Right. We were walking up that hill. The Combine Harvester just happened to be there. <laughs> it just happened to oh, be there. Oh, man. So we just took it. Far out. And then, um, but we did have to walk up the hill and back again. So by the time we were up the hill and back again, that was probably a couple of hours. And then we did the extra shot in the echo chamber. Dan and I are going to do a video in this echo oh, chamber that we found. Unbelievable. And those are the sort of apocalyptic looking things. So yeah, not, not a huge amount of time, but the thing that took all the time was the trying to mix the track. Right. Because I just don't know how to do that. And the edit, maybe five hours. Okay. Six hours. <sighs> wow. Yeah. Epic. Well done, mate. Very let's good. never do this again. <laughs> no, let's do it all the time. <laughs> Brilliant, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, let us know what you think. Um, yeah, we read all your comments so um, and really appreciate that. So thanks so much. Massive thank you to our patrons on Patreon. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Also, a massive thank you to our preferred retailers in the UK and Europe is. Uh, Anderson's Music of Guildford. And in Australia. Would be Pedal Empire of Brisbane, Queensland. Please check them out. And the links below. Yes, go to Sweetwater. Click on our links, buy stuff, and we can become rich. There we go. And uh, yeah. Or at least. Buy, uh, buy our own. I have half a turkey for Christmas. <laughs> um... Also, massive thank you to anyone that's gone to thatpedalshowstore.com and grabbed t-shirts and merch and all that stuff. Yes. Indeed. Lovely. Thank you guys so much. Have a fantastic day. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.